Nero, the one-armed deadweight. Son of Virgil and more human than most in the Devil May Cry series. But surprise, surprise, another character with an inferiority complex. Hello and welcome to the very first Prime 1 Studios Devil May Cry 5 line review. And of course we're starting with the newest Devil Hunter, Deadweight Coon. I mean Nero. This is the ultimate premium Masterline Nero Deluxe version from Prime 1 Studio. Jesus, Prime 1. Can, can, can you fix your naming? You're killing me. You're killing me. So, shall we begin the unboxing and assembly? If you'd like to skip this portion, please go to the timestamp marked below. See you guys there.
Where do we start on this statue? Honestly, I have no idea. Send help. Like, there's so much going on with this statue, with the, the swap outs, the hyper detailed base, the hyper detailed character. This is insanity. Why? Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Okay, let's start with the base, because it's really cool. Uh, the, the base itself is made up mostly of the Impusa's head and body, which is wrapped around the side and back there. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if the Impusa is meant to be dead, um, but we'll just go with mostly dead. It seems mostly dead. Now, the Impusa is one of the uh, lesser enemies from the Devil May Cry 5 game. Um, and as you can see, it's been crushed down here by Nero, as well as the concrete and even the, the Clifod root itself. So, that is what makes up the vast majority of the base itself. The triple faces, if you look very, very closely, it's not just one center face. There's actually two faces on either side. And um, you can really see the noses protruding out. Um, which is a really, really nice detail. Um, it looks absolutely awesome. The gore on it is not what you would expect. Uh, if, you, if anyone's seen the Dante statue, the, the hyper-realistic gore on that one really shows off Dante's battle prowess, whereas this one it's a lot more reserved with just one slash, which is why I'm assuming it's just mostly dead. It's probably just been crushed by the concrete and Clifford root more than anything. <laughs> The clenched, bloodied, and uh, sort of fleshy jaw, uh, which you can see in the center face there, is really unnerving. Definitely some sort of <laughs> nightmare fuel. Um, I do love how lifelike it is, though. Like the fleshy parts look really realistic with uh, the way they've painted it and sculpted it. It just looks honestly amazing. Um, a lot of uh, work must have went into that part alone. The rest of the base seems to be strangled by the Clifford roots, the concrete, the, the rest of the Impusa. Um, and as you can see here, the Clifford root is even going up towards the concrete where Nero is jumping off. And if you look closely, you can actually see a single wing protruding out of the back of the Impusa. Uh, the the colour, the, the black and blue sort of gloss colour they've used here for the, the wing is really, really cool. Um, Definitely very well sculpted, very well painted, and just looks beautiful and very otherworldly. Um, if you look behind the wing itself, you can actually see some battle damage that the Impusa has actually sustained, possibly from Nero himself this time, other than the, the concrete damage. <laughs> now on the other side here, underneath uh, Nero's right foot, and uh, near the sort of Clifford root itself, you can see one of the Imp uh, Impusa's claws which is sort of like a tooth, toothed uh, claw on one side, covered in blood and, and gore. Uh, definitely very nicely painted, very well sculpted as well. It looks absolutely beautiful and really horrific in, in a way. Um, but definitely a nice added little bonus to the base of the statue. Now, the colour of the Impusa's head, I did have a bit of an issue with that. It seemed... A little, the colouring seemed a little lifeless uh, in comparison to the Dante statue which I will post a picture here um, the colouring didn't seem all that correct on the Impusa head but it does still look really really great with all the cracks and the, the gore coming out of the centre face so overall it's still a very very nice base um, one of, I do like a I do like a sort of messy, jumbled base. So this is definitely giving me that. Now for the character himself. Uh, before we discuss the many swappable parts, the character himself is absolutely incredible. The sculptor is absolutely beautiful. Um, the dynamic jumping pose, which shows his acrobatic sort of uh, high speed fighting style, is absolutely beautiful. Um, the head sculpt, much like many of the Prime 1 uh, statues, uses the sort of transparent resin to show off that skin tone and it looks really beautiful. Um, it adds a really realistic look to the face sculpt. 
and even the eyes, the sort of glossy paint they use over the eyes sort of, to sort of varnish it to make it look as realistic as possible is really well done. Um, love the shading and the colour as well, especially in the hair, like the short spikes that were all sculpted in there with the, the colouring and shading it looks really, really nice. Uh, now, the jacket. We have to talk about this jacket. Holy crap. Uh, the way the jacket's been sculpted in the sort of flowing, dynamic sort of way... Um, really really adds to this statue as a whole it it looks incredible and um, the way they've sculpted colored and shaded the sort of leather texture into the jacket on this polystone resin is just incredible uh prime one are always well known for doing stuff like this going above and beyond when it comes to their trying to make things look as realistic as possible look as accurate to the source material as possible it just it's Spot on with the, the game design. Um, on the arm that features the uh, the Devil Breaker, you can actually see the tattered uh, lines, the bra the broken parts of the leather where the stump um, is placed. And it just looks amazing. Like, you, like if, you, if you look closely, you can see that the zips are coloured perfectly. The buckles, the, the stitching is amazing. Like you, you can see the stitching throughout the entire jacket showing off that really hyper stylized look. Now underneath the jacket you can actually see his tattered uh, crimson jumper which the way they've sculpted it makes it look like a really like, sort of woven fabric. Um, you can also see the, the white t-shirt protruding under, uh, from the bottom of it as well and through the holes that have formed over time on the the jumper itself now i did have an issue with that as well um the painting on certain parts where the paint was coming like the the white was coming through from the t-shirt underneath weren't painted great um it's noticeable if you're looking if you're looking for it by a distance it's not really noticeable so it's, it's not a ma it's not a major issue but it was, a, it was a little disappointing um <clears throat> also if you notice there is a little string necklace for nero as well <laughs> almost missed that in the review even though it's something I missed when I was unboxing the thing and had to go back to the box after I'd repacked it to pull it back out and actually display it with them as minor a detail as it is it's nice to see that they've paid that much attention to detail that they've put that in there it's definitely like very nice using string rather than trying to sculpt it in and possibly it not ended up quite well now the trousers are really, really well done as well. The sculpting is awesome, just shows off that sort of uh, hyperdynamic posing, the way they've sculpted and shaded it in there. Um, the stitching, yet again, same as the jacket, is very noticeable. Um, just shows off that really intricate design and definitely adds to the overall piece itself. Um, additional little detail that I did notice was really cool on, his, on Nero's combat boots. If you look closely, there's actually dirt and mud splatter on the boots themselves which just shows that he's been running through like dark dirty sort of streets battling these demons and honestly like seeing that small minor detail on the statue definitely sold me on this and and i do love a dynamic pose so that definitely added to that as well okay so now uh the part we've been all waiting for the swap out parts which took a while yeah, it took a while <laughs> Now we'll start with uh, the two variants of the Overture, um, Devil Breaker. The, these fit into Nero's right arm. Um, one is sort of outstretched um, and the other is contracted, which you can see here. Um, <clears throat> both of them were hyper, like, are really, really well detailed. The, the use of the metallic colours, the, the silvers, the blues, the blacks. To sort of make sure that it's very mechanical looking as it is in the game it's just absolutely incredible they even went to the extended effort of putting in the small warning writing to certain parts of it um across all the devil breakers not just the overture <laughs> it's just honestly incredible and as you can see on the palm of the outstretched overture you can see the warning sign on the the base of the palm now, for the DX Devil Breaker swap out, so this only comes with the DX version, not the standard. The punchline. <laughs> this 
part is what sold me on buying the DX version of this statue. The way that they've done the jet stream around the back and then this, the right hand side of this statue is just amazing and adds so much to the base. They use a sort of uh, clear cloud painted re uh, resin for the parts surrounding the jet stream and then the rocket portion is a separate piece using metallic reds, yellows and silvers to really give off that sort of rocket mechanical look and then the added fist at the end of it. Then with that you also get the mechanical stump where the punchline would have been shot from just to add to that little like just that, that little detail is just absolutely incredible that they added something like that when they could have just stuck with a normal hand or just had the punchline just attached to the arm rather than doing something that over the top. <laughs> I absolutely love that part. It, I, no matter how I'm posing him, he will always have that attached because it really adds a lot to that base and just makes a statue really stand out even compared to the other two in the line. Then we have the, uh, the, the Gerbera if I'm pronouncing that right. Sort of like a huge satellite dish. I didn't use this personally in the game all that much. Um, it's the only statue part for this statue that actually uses an LED feature. Um, in the palm of the hand, you can see it sort of shines purple. I was unaware of this when I actually initially bought it because I was more excited about the punchline, but it's definitely a nice little feature to add to the statue and definitely add a great added detail for this statue. Uh, it's, uh, anyone that loved the, the Gerbera uh, Devil Breaker in the game is absolutely going to love this piece. I uh, can't see anyone that wouldn't. The different metallic colours they used on the Gerbera as well were brilliantly applied, showing off that mechanical look using purples and greens. Absolutely no complaints about that one at all. Now for his normal hand, his left hand. Uh, there's only two swappable parts for this hand uh, with the Blue Rose and the Red Queen. We will start with the Blue Rose. Uh, this double action revolver looks amazing. Um, the sort of paint that they used, um, sort of giving it a sort of a worn down, like battle worn, realistic look, uh, just looks incredible. The Red Queen, however, was a little disappointing. Um, I'm unsure of what material that was used for it, but it definitely does not feel as weighty, does not feel as. Um, great as the rest of the statue itself it definitely used a, it feels it feels much cheaper um, and when attaching the hand to the hilt of the sword itself didn't feel great using I had to pull you have to pull the brake lever up and that's definitely made of sort of cheap plastic and then you have to fit it over the knuckles of the hand feel like you're scraping the resin of the hand so that definitely did not feel great did not it didn't sit too well with me um but on looking at the blade itself it it does look incredible uh the six uh the six exhaust pipes um from the game on the sword look incredible uh the site this the but the motorcycle like grip the brake lever look amazing despite the materials used Overall, it is still a great sword, and I'll definitely be using the sword in the display over the Blue Rose simply because of the fact that it has much more presence and definitely looks much better than a simple revolver in his hand. But it, it was a little disappointing, but still looks great overall. So that's it for the swappable parts. Thankfully, I got through that fairly okay. Um, now, the last thing to cover is a little added counterpart that came with the DX version of this statue. The green orb. This is a nice little added bonus that came to those who ordered the DX version. Creepy little face on him and the, the clear blue resin just looks fantastic. And it, it sits very nicely next to Nero and will look great when uh, it's displayed with him alongside the further statues down the line. So, what's the size of this uh, beautiful boy? At his tallest, uh, with the blue rose in his hand, he stands at 71 centimeters tall. So that's approximately 28 inches. Um, he's 46 centimeters wide. That's a depth of about 37 set at no 39 centimeters. <clears throat> at his shortest, 
when he's holding the Red Queen. He stands at 65 centimeters, so about 25 inches. But um, it's got an added depth, so it's about 47 centimeters deep when he's using the Red Queen. Now, the big question. Is this statue worth the price? At the base price of $999 US, I'd say it's a definitive yes. With the flaws aside, it is still an, an incredible statue, and you will be unlikely to find any Nero statue with this much detail for a price like that. And if you did, I'd be very surprised. And I can honestly say this is one of a kind that I would never, I've never seen anything like this for the Devil May Cry series. And I just absolutely love this statue. So that's the end of the review. It's It's been an absolute blast. If you have enjoyed this content, please feel free to subscribe. If you have any opinions of your own about this statue or have any questions, please leave a comment below and I will do my best to reply. Um, and if you like this video in particular, please hit like. It definitely goes a long way to help me out. Um... But until the next video, see you guys next time.